Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. This session I shall discuss the various other scheduling algorithms. So in the very first uh, module of this session, operating systems, which was all about process management and the very first uh, topic after the introduction to processes and threads is that you have learned about the scheduling algorithms. So you have seen the other scheduling algorithms like the FCFS you have learned, then shortest job first, SRTN, round robin scheduling, priority scheduling. So these, all these scheduling algorithms in the examination a numerical can be asked. So you can carry out that numerical based on the logic for that particular scheduling. Now apart from these scheduling algorithms, there are other various scheduling algorithms also. Which are those, to name those algorithms I have written here on the board, multi-level queue scheduling, multi-level feedback scheduling, guaranteed scheduling, lottery scheduling and fair share scheduling. So, a numerical will not be asked on these kind of scheduling but definitely you should be knowing the logic how this scheduling algorithm works and if at all a question is asked on like right uh, or briefly explain the these kind of these various scheduling algorithms then you should know the logic you can write a descriptive answer for it so let me begin with the very first scheduling algorithm in this category and that's why i have named this category as various other various process scheduling algorithms okay and in that for the very first one will be multi level queue scheduling algorithms so let me explain you how this particular schedule process scheduling works so here what exactly is done actually this comes in <coughs> multiple queues in multiple queues you have two categories one is the multi level queue scheduling and another is multi level feedback scheduling so remember the first two in this list belongs to which category multiple queues scheduling in multiple queues scheduling further one is multi level queue scheduling and another is multi level feedback scheduling so how these two algorithm works let me explain about these two scheduling algorithms in this session and the remaining i shall explain in the next session so here if you look the logic for this multi level first look at the word multi level you have different levels here and what are these levels actually these are the set of processes that are categorized one set of processes which are executing or which are performing tasks only to make the operating system function those processes comes under the category system processes and then you have the second category called as interactive processes the third one is the batch processes and the fourth one is the student processes and the highest priority is given to which kind it is given to the system processes highest priority and the lowest priority is for the student processes how this algorithm works i'll explain now the first thing is when you say that there are different levels actually these are the different queues so in all the previous scheduling algorithms you have seen there is one type of queue and you call it as ready queue and from that ready queue only the scheduler is going to pick a process for scheduling here there will be four different ready queues so i can write here ready queue one okay ready queue two ready queue three and ready queue 4 all these processes are placed in main memory there is one single main memory only but the different queues are there so previous scheduling algorithms what you have assumed is only one type of queue and you used to call it as ready queue now you have four different ready queues here each ready queue will be holding processes belonging to the respective categories the first one is the system processes always the highest priority is given to the system processes and next is what the interactive processes interactive processes are those i think i have given you a brief explanation about these uh, interactive and batch processes in the start introductory classes for the process management so interactive processes are those which needs to uh, users intervention suppose if the program starts uh, executing in the mid of the execution the system will ask a particular type of query to the user the user has to respond to that then only the system will pro proceed what for the remaining execution normally you would have seen no unless you press sometimes what not during execution you will be prompted to uh, reply like whether you want to continue or not yes or no this kind of intervention from the users are required all those that means interactive the word itself you can see here interactive the process is interacting with the user here all the time in order to get it get the complete execution done the third type is the batch processes here 
all the jobs okay similar kind of jobs are put in a batch and given for execution no user intervention is required here finally the final output can be uh, taken by the user at the end so in our, uh, if suppose what happens is a similar kind of jobs are put together in a we say it is in a batch and all those process jobs will get executed and finally at the end of the day or at the end of the hour the user is going to see the final output for all those related jobs so those jobs comes under those kind of processes comes under the batch processes after the batch processes you have another category called as the student processes student processes so you are all knowing very well what are the different types of programs a student is executing all those processes comes under this so definitely you should not feel sad that why our processes are placed at the end of the or why our processes are given the last priority look here if the system functions only then your processes will get executed is it not so that's why these processes are actually making the system functioning happening smoothly and without so these processes will definitely given what the highest priority all the processes that are working for the what that are working for the functioning of the operating system then definitely this requires more priority it is an analogy where i have already given one such analogy before also so on the road if at all you want you see a vip a vehicle moving it is allowed and the other normal public is made to wait so why you are allowing normal uh, why you are allowing the vip person to move uh, without making that person wait at the signal so normally people think that okay see this person is given so much of importance and he is allowed and we are whereas for us we are being waiting for such a long time so that should not be the feeling if the person is allowed definitely there will be a cause he is a leader he is a a person who is taking care of the system his time is precious so he is his time is precious and he should not be allowed to wait or his time should not get wasted that's the reason wherever people work for the system that those people should be given the top priority so whether it is in our everyday life or it is in the operating system the same principle is carried out we have the second and moreover one more thing i wanted to tell you in this different four radio queues different scheduling algorithms can be used here like suppose in the first they may use fcfs round robin okay shortest job first then priority or whatever uh, or shortest job first or shortest remaining time next this kind so it it is need it need not be that all these four ready queues will use the single type of scheduling algorithm but they can use any different so once uh, they apply this uh, particular scheduling algorithm the processes will follow this logic and they complete the task so here if at all you want to make this diagram complete i can tell you where this ready queues are already given the ready queues are what to the cpu because the scheduler will assign the process to the cpu for execution so from each of this ready queue the processes are there priority strictly followed here see normally what will happen now if uh, if there are no processes in this first level then the processes from the second level will be taken if no processes in the first and second level then the processes from the third level will be taken no processes available in the first three then what the processes from the last level will be taken for execution because of this logic only we say this type of scheduling algorithm suffers from starvation and starvation is for which starvation is more severe for the last level it so happens that a student process starts getting executed let us take for example p1 and p2 are here p3 p4 are under interactive p5 p6 are batch 7 p7 p8 are student processes suppose if let us assume that p1 p7 starts executing when p7 see first of all when the turn for p7 can when the turn for p7 came when all the uh, these queues we are not having any processes present in it so that's why the student processes got the chance for execution now when the student process got chance for execution if it starts executing the mid of the execution any process of system process is comes in the ready queue then this process p7 will be preempted and then what whichever process is present in the ready queue one will be taken for execution so that's why because of this logic the lower level uh, queues will always suffer from Uh, starvation to overcome this problem only we have the second type of scheduling called as multi level feedback scheduling so what is the new thing that gets included here we wanted to overcome which problem the starvation problem for that reason i can show you with the same diagram okay i'll just make small changes here
what is it multi level feedback so i'll just slightly change the diagram here what i am going to do is going to give a feedback and i have to indicate with this kind of arrow direction the feedback the feedback is from the student processes to the one level up which is called as the batch process then from this batch process it is to the interactive and from the interactive it is to the system processes so with this mechanism a process belonging to this lower level queue can also move to a higher level queue suppose if they if the if the processes are here executing in the student level in the student processes queue one of the process can move on to the batch processes this level queue then once it completes its job it uh, it can come out so it will complete and exit at each level this thing will happen okay complete and exit complete and exit so a process is allowed a lower level process is allowed to move to a higher level queue so with this we can avoid the starvation problem if any process let us take process p8 p8 was ex getting executed with round robin al algorithm let us assume here if p8 was getting executed with round robin scheduling and p8 has what p8 has got some time quantum value as 8 units if p8 has completed four units here okay and the remaining four units is still pending for p8 with the feedback mechanism it it can move to the next level and when it comes to the next level the remaining part of this time quantum that is four more units that were pending get executed in this ready queue so whatever uh, round robin scheduling was used here the same thing will continue here in the uh, higher level queue and then it will complete its job and it will exit so this way the feedback mechanism is given this is about multi level queue scheduling and multi level feedback scheduling so hope this session is useful to you all if you find it useful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye take care